Yes, indeed. It is called the Lothric region, where the transitory lands of the Elite Four converge. In venturing north, the trainers discover the truth of the old worlds. The battle fades, and the Elite go without throne. Hello everyone and welcome back to Fantasy Forge. I'm Cameron Holt and I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be randomly generating some Pokemon and some Soulsborne bosses in order to create some new horrors fit to stroll the streets of Lothric and Yarnum. For the sake of my own sanity and to avoid any lore mix-ups, I'm going to be adding the resulting creations to my homebrew D&D world of Vassiker. Links to the website that I use to randomly generate Pokemon, as well as the D100 list that I put together of Soulsborne bosses, can be found in the description down below if you want to play along at home. Alright, enough stalling. Let's get started. Our first Pokemon of the day is Lugia. Legendary out of the gate, not bad. Lugia is the ruler of the three legendary birds, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. The beating of its giant hand wings can create storms for miles around. The counterpart to Ho-Oh, ruler of the skies, Lugia is ruler of the seas, and is rumored to spend most of its time chilling in and around the ocean until it's needed to quell a disagreement among the three legendary birds of Kanto. Our first Soulsborne boss of the day is Mitha, the Baneful Queen from Dark Souls 2. Mitha was fabled to be a beautiful princess. She was wed to the prince of a nearby castle, presumably the Iron Keep, and went on to become queen. Beautiful as she was, her king longed for another so she ingested whatever poisons and potions she believed could make her more beautiful in an effort to win the king's love. However, the poisons transformed Mitha into a monster, and so the king had her beheaded. But thanks to the years of ingesting foul concoctions, Mitha's life endured. Together they form Fable the Baneful Legend. This vile and vicious beast was once a man, a servant to Lord Varden Crexus, the first king of the Crexon Empire. Fable began his life as a simple stable boy caring for the royal horses. Through years of dedication to his work, he was eventually entrusted with the role of the royal cupbearer, and before each meal would test the drink of the king. It was an immense honor to ensure the king's safety and Fable took his duty very seriously. During this time, the Crexon Empire continued to wage its seemingly unending war against the elves native to Vassiker. One fateful evening, a spy from the elven forests of Hoston managed to slip a cursed poison into the king's wine. Upon tasting it, Fable grew bloated and scales sprouted from his skin. His body swelled up and he took on a snake-like appearance. His mind, however, remained his own. He rushed to inform King Varden of this treachery, but upon bursting into the throne room found that he could not control his speech in this new monstrous form. Filled with fear at the appearance of an apparent beast, the king, together with his trusted knights, attempted to slay the beast. Alas, once his head was removed, Fable remained alive, cursed to remain in his gruesome form for eternity. The legends say that his mind was fractured that day, and he has since fled and roams the marshes of Percabia, a baneful creature seeking revenge on all of those who call themselves knights and heroes. I'm pretty happy with how this one came out. I don't usually use texture overlays, but I wanted to go for a realistic kind of scale-like texture, and I definitely didn't want to paint tiny individual scales. <laughs> it definitely took some trial and error, but ultimately I think it came out well. Our next Pokémon is Bastiodon, the rock and steel type shield boy. They weigh over 300 pounds and have a hardened, shield-like face. It repulses attacks to its face and is apparently 100 million years old, so that's cool. The Soulsborne boss that will be fused with Bastiodon is the Capra Demon from Dark Souls. For having such a cool design, there's very little lore about the Capra Demon. All we really know is that they are lesser demons with goat heads that carry two machetes, and that the first one that you face as a boss battle in-game is accompanied by two undead dogs. They have exposed bone along their spines, tails, and chest, as well as on their goat skulls.
together they become shield demons. Roaming the shadow fields of the abyssal plain, shield demons graze upon the sorrow of the souls lost there. Wardens of the weakened veil, they stand guard over the parts of the abyssal plain where the veil wears thin, and keep lost souls and demons alike from entering the material plane. With their massive skulls hard as steel, they line up to form barricades using their blade-like tusks to slice and push back those trying to exit or enter the abyss. When it comes to shield-like heads, my first thought was Triceratops, so I tried to combine those aspects with a goat-like skull, and went with a more bovine body to keep with the farm animal theme of the Capra Demon, while sticking with the quadrupedal orientation of the Bastiodon. I'm pretty happy with how it came out, let me know what decisions you would make when combining the two down in the comments below. Our final Pokémon of the day is Moltres. Wow, out of over 800 Pokémon to randomly choose from, what are the odds that we'd get two legendary birds in one video? I looked it up, it's about 0.625%. Moltres is the third of the three original legendary birds, and resembles a peacock that's been lit aflame. Shedding embers with each flap of its wings, it heals itself by taking a dip in the molten magma of a volcano. The randomly generated boss that will be fused with Moltres is... The Abyss Watchers from Dark Souls 3. Arguably one of my favorite boss designs, and one of the more challenging battles in Dark Souls 3. The Abyss Watchers are a group of undead warriors that task themselves with pushing back the darkness of the Abyss. They drew their power from the Farron Wolf's blood, but were betrayed by the fire. After becoming Lords of Cinder, the wolf blood dried up, poisoning the Farron Woods and driving the Watchers mad. Now, darkness roams freely through the poison woods of Farron, and the Abyss Watchers are locked in an eternal battle amongst themselves at the edge of the Catacombs of Carthus. Together they form the Molten Watchers. Ever since the Great Cataclysm, when the old gods were purged from the material plane, the veils between the planes have been thin in certain areas across Vassiker. One such area is Mount Reek in the Western Dunes. The effects of the elemental plane of fire have melted the rock within the mountain, creating a portal through which elemental beasts escape into the material plane. An order of knights were stationed around Mount Reek by the Crexon Empire as a means of controlling the spread of the elemental creatures. But over time, the knights themselves became tainted by the elemental energy. They have since shifted their allegiance, safeguarding the portal from intruders who would seek to close it. These molten watchers endlessly patrol the areas surrounding Mount Reek, needing not food, nor drink, nor even sleep, ever watching over the molten peak. Thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun making this one, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to Fantasy Forge for more fantasy art content. It's free! A huge thank you to my current subscribers. It's thanks to you that I continue to have the drive to keep creating content like this, and it's a blast. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, stay safe out there, adventurers. Did it. We did it, y'all. We made it through another fucking video. Holy shit.